Although most of the places that people usually live are kind of box-shaped and divided into spaces to perform all the usual human functions like sleeping, eating, and peeing, sometimes people have placed those box-shaped dwellings in some especially unusual spots around the world. We've put together a brief list of just a few of the more weird ones, so prepare yourself to embark on a journey through a collection of remarkable abodes that push the boundaries of risk and imagination. From homes perched on plinths to others clinging to sides of volcanoes, here are 20 riskiest houses in the world. Number 20. Dangerous House Okay, so this is not exactly what you would usually classify as a house, but you know how we at the Fancy Banana just love to keep you all on your toes and mix things up, right? Anyway, what we appear to have here is a man setting up for a spot of attention seeking, I mean fishing, at a local river. Now, when you or I go fishing, we're usually content with sitting on the riverbank or perhaps in a boat, if we're fortunate enough to have the use of one. But this guy, oh no, that's all too regular, and it definitely won't get all those delicious internet-y clicks that he so desperately craves. In the spirit of ingenuity, he's apparently fashioned himself a dangerous-looking hanging shelter slash nest that he's going to dangle from the side of the bridge over the fast-running water of the river down below. What this particular spot gains him, rather than any of the more traditional fishing positions, well, that's anyone's guess. And so he hangs his weird plastic bubble from the bridge and bungs a load of hay inside and then clambers in, and from the river he gets wet anyways, and then begins to assemble his rudimentary fishing stuff. He sets his line in and begins to catch fish, and where he's planning on putting them, in this tiny, sweaty, dangly nest ball, who could really say? Perhaps in his pockets. But what do you think about this one? Go ahead and start up a discussion in the comments section down below. You know you want to. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Hanging Temple the Hanging Temple is one of the most popular tourist attractions of the area around Datong in China. This is certainly a place that is unusual, even if it isn't technically found in the woods. The 1,500-year-old temple has been constructed 246 feet above the ground, which presumably adds a sense of excitement to the daily ritual worship of the place. Or it would, if that was really what it was about anymore. Nowadays, the temple is the site of historical significance, but is also primarily a tourism hotspot on the account of the weird idea of a building just hanging off the side of a cliff. The temple itself is the only existing place in all of China which has a combination of three of the Chinese traditional philosophies, those being Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. Although it looks as though it just hangs there, the structure is actually fixed to the cliff with huge oak beams that are attached in holes that have been chiseled into the rock. And so it's probably kind of safe, and even so, I wouldn't practice your jumping up and down while visiting. It's been there for one and a half millennia, after all. Number 18. Coastline Homes Now, I know there will be some of you who have, jokingly I'm sure, said that you hope that California will break off and fall into the sea. But I know you don't really mean it. I mean, what would happen to all those bears? And when you see these dramatic images that reveal the precarious situation that's faced by residents of Pacifica, California, as their apartments teeter on the brink of plunging into the ocean, I know you wouldn't wish for them to drop off into the Pacific. It was actually so bad that in response to the escalating danger, a local state of emergency had to be declared. The relentless force of El Nino-driven winds had caused approximately 20 feet of land near a bluff to erode and collapse into the ocean within the space of just two weeks. Consequently, authorities in Pacifica had no choice but to declare a group of apartments unfit for habitation, permitting residents only to briefly return to retrieve their belongings. Perhaps California really will just break away and fall into the ocean one day. Number 17. Homes on Mount Merapi 
Living on the slopes of a volcano is not exactly something that many people would necessarily choose to do, but sometimes people live where they live and they don't get a whole lot of choice in the matter to begin with. If they've chosen this particular location, however, then it is fair to say that these are people who enjoy a spot of danger in their everyday lives. Mount Merape in Java, Indonesia is one such place. In fairness, most of Indonesia is fairly fiery and volcanic. So options for not living in the path of some potentially deadly inferno, they are kind of limited. However, Mount Marape is an active volcano, and back in 2010, it would erupt all over the show, forcing thousands of people to be evacuated from their homes on the slopes. 40,000 people would be housed in temporary shelters as they had attempted to avoid the so-called death zones that many of the villages had become. Now, I don't know about you, but if your home is labeled as a death zone, it certainly seems as if it might be time to consider moving house. Number 16. The Tree Houses of the Korowai Tribe Despite being pretty isolated and living harmoniously with nature in their rainforest home, the Korowai people have hit the headlines all over the place with tabloids looking for sensational stories of wild places and weird rituals. The newspaper's dreams came true when they could point a spotlight on the unusual culture of the Korowai people, listing cannibalism and witchcraft amongst their favorite hobbies. But as is always the case with the tabloid headlines, you do have to look a little bit deeper to get the real sense of what the story might be. In a remote area of the Indonesian rainforest, the Korowai build their remarkable houses between 8 and 15 meters off the ground, sometimes in the trees or on tall stilts. The reason is said to be that evil spirits only stay around on the ground, so building up high will keep the family safe. It also offers great protection from animals and a lot of insects, as well as invading humans. They are a religious people, and their beliefs include reincarnation, as well as respect for their ancestors and the belief that some of their people even have magical abilities. From the river directly, not from mm. uh, something from... And they're able to influence things like luck and also detect black magic. This element of their culture is probably where the accusations of cannibalism and witchcraft would come in, and in the past, there may have been some violent endings to disagreements within the tribe. These days, however, most issues are pretty well solved by just giving each other gifts. I guess that offering a bunch of flowers to your neighbor is a lot less dramatic than eating them, but it probably makes a lot less mess as well. So, not so good for tabloid headlines, though. Number 15. Kachki Pillar Located in the extremely remote western Emirati region of Georgia, the Kachki Pillar is an unusual sight to behold. It's a naturally occurring limestone monolith that stretches for more than 130 feet off the ground below. As if that wasn't unusual enough, there's also a church that's perched all the way on top of it. The building is one of the most isolated in the entire planet. It is 125 miles away from the Georgian capital and is extremely difficult to get to. So it's probably fair to say that this church doesn't have the most thriving and diverse of congregations. After a car or bus journey, final part of the quest must be undertaken on foot, a steep 20-minute climb up the hazardous trail to the top of the monolith. The church would be built between the 6th and 8th centuries and is dedicated to a 7th century monk known as Maximus the Confessor. Inside, as well as the usual church, there's a burial chamber, three hermit cells, and the all-important wine cellar. Monks who live below make the dangerous climb every day in order to say their prayers at the church, and they are the only people who are allowed to make the ascent. Only men have ever been allowed, and now only monks are permitted at the top. It sounds like it must be really super boring up there. Number 14. The Log House Back along, there used to be a tall wooden house that stood beside the Davina River on the outskirts of Archangel in northern Russia. It was almost mythical to locals, and not so locals alike. From a distance away, the structure itself appeared to be something akin to a Japanese pagoda, but when you got up close to it, the full extent of its weirdness really came into focus. The building was made of planks of wood that, upon closer inspection, were all jumbled and kind of bizarrely positioned. It was also extremely, and surprisingly, tall. It 
It looks like it could be from the pages of a fairy tale book or even perhaps a nightmare landscape, and the house was 13 floors tall, measuring 144 feet at its highest point. The owner had continued to add to the building all throughout the entire 15 years that he lived there, hence its eventual height and weird appearance. He ended up being sent to jail, and while he was there, people robbed his home and complained about the size of the structure. In the end, it would be pulled down by local authorities after being determined as far outside the maximum height restrictions for the city's buildings. The house is no longer there, but it remains in the memories of everyone who ever saw it looming menacingly on the horizon. Number 13. Falling Water House Moving swiftly on, we now find ourselves in Mill Run, Pennsylvania, where beloved 20th century American architect Frank Lloyd Wright designed a beautiful and unique home complete with a waterfall. Oh, that's pretty cool, <laughs> Falling Water is a property that sets deep within the Bear Run Nature Preserve in the Appalachian Mountains. All of the usual architecty language has been applied to this place, and it makes claims to have redefined the relationship between man, architecture, and nature. Well, yeah, of course, but it is still a house, right? It was built in 1935 and certainly broke new ground in the idea of where homes might be positioned and what kind of features that they could incorporate. But it didn't exactly trigger a runaway trend for building houses on top of waterfalls, which is really probably a blessing because that would definitely have cluttered up the world's beauty spots, wouldn't it? There you go, though. If money is no object and you know a famous architect in the 1930s, it was actually possible to buy a piece of a national park and plop a piece of modernist architecture on top of a waterfall without too much kerfuffle. Those were much more simple times. Number 12. The Principality of Sealand now, there is an offshore platform in the North Sea, located about seven and a half miles off the coast of Suffolk. Back in 1967, this unusual place was declared to be the Principality of Sealand by a man named Patty Roy Bates. The micronation is actually not officially recognized as such, but has nonetheless been occupied by the family and associates of Bates ever since. Before it became the unofficial nation of Sealand, Welcome to Sealand. Thank you. The platform was built by the British during the Second World War. It would then later be taken over by pirate radio broadcasters before being seized by Bates in 1967. There was an occasion in 78 when mercenaries invaded the micronation, but Bates was somehow able to repel the attack. This place is not officially recognized as a sovereign state and sits within British territorial waters, but it all seems rather exciting and a lot of playing forts on a really big scale. I can't even imagine it's a terribly practical spot for access to the shops, and it's probably going to be tricky to sell, all on the basis of its distinct lack of curb appeal. Number 11. The Cliff Village this is a small village in China's Sichuan province, affectionately known as the Cliff Village, and it's easy to see why. The village itself is perched all the way up there on a 2,600-foot-high cliff, and in recent years, thanks to the wonders of the internet, the place has become a super-famous tourist attraction. Back along in the past, the village was inhabited by residents who were extremely poor and lived right on the edge of existence, to such an extent, in fact, that they had taken their lives into their own hands whenever they scaled the side of the cliff in order to head home. The village used to be accessible only by a series of really wonky rotten ladders, and to be honest, even though improvements have been made to the ladder situation, it still looks the teeniest bit dangerous to me. In 2016, the local government invested a whole lot of money in the village, and a new steel ladder would replace the old rickety ones. That ladder has 2,556 rungs and measures almost two miles long. The swanky new ladder cost almost $150,000 to build, but it's also intended to make it much more safe for villagers to climb up and down. This is now a hot spot for numpties who love to make videos for the old social media, and the necessity for safety is paramount when these people are poking their selfie sticks all over the show. Just imagine how it must be to live in the place, though. What if you get all the way to the bottom and you realize that you left your wallet at home? Number 10. Maldives Bungalows 
The Maldives are widely recognized as a dream destination that many aspire to visit. The mere mention of this country evokes visions of lavish huts perched above a stunning azure ocean. However, the looming threat of climate change puts the Maldives at a risk of disappearing altogether. Situated in the middle of the Indian Ocean, the Maldives is an archipelago that's comprised of more than 1,100 coral islands. Unfortunately, it holds the distinction of being the world's lowest lying nation. As a result, the rising sea levels caused by global climate change pose an existential danger to this island nation. Multiple reports from reputable sources like NASA and the U.S. Geological Survey warn that if global warming continues at its current pace, nearly 80% of the Maldives could become uninhabitable by 2050. During the recent UN Climate Change Conference, also known as COP26, Ibrahim Mohamed Soli, the president of the Maldives, voiced his concerns about the situation, lamenting the slow encroachment of the sea on their islands and stating that if this trend is not reversed, the Maldives will cease to exist before the turn of the century. Number 9. The Floating Homes of Lake Titicaca Lake Titicaca, apart from having the funniest name, is also the biggest high-altitude lake in the world. Would you credit it? As well as all of that excitement, Old Lake Titicaca, let's just say it again, shall we? Titicaca is also where you can find some mysterious floating islands. The Euros Islands of Titicaca are made of aquatic reeds that are called totora. These have been used by Andean people for generations to craft these floating islands on which they build their homes, also from the same reeds. There are approximately 60 to 70 of these islands in total, and the numbers are kind of fluid though, because they may merge or disappear as their inhabitants move to a different island. The islands are just a part of the traditional lives of the indigenous people who live here on Lake Titicaca, and they also also wear the clothing and live the same way that they have for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Although of course, many people also enjoy the convenience of modern stuff like motorboats and solar panels and such. But these days, however, they're also a tourist attraction and have adjusted their lives to be convenient to the visiting nosy parkers of the world who come to Lake Titicaca. Number 8. The World's Loneliest House now this may be one of the most remote looking houses that we've seen on this list so far. This is on Iceland's Elide Island, a place that is so odd in appearance that it looks like it's fallen straight off the pages of a storybook. And the house is perched right there in the center of this weird green slice of an island. There have been a lot of rumors and stories about this spooky looking place over the years, but the truth is really not that interesting. The island was once considered the premium place for people who enjoyed puffin hunting, which sounds awful I know, but it is a thing that some people do seem to like. Anyways, the house is not the secret pad of a millionaire. Well, one thing's for sure, I know where I'm going in a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> nor is it the hideaway of a religious fanatic, nor even does it belong to Bjork. These are some of the rumors. It actually is just a lodge that was constructed in 1953 for all of the puffin hunting enthusiasts to hang out in when they weren't out doing all the bird murders. And so the story may not be as intriguing as the situation would seem to suggest. Today, only hunting association members are actually allowed to use the lodge, and it's not available to regular old riffraff like you and I. Number 7. Norway Homes Landslides are terrifying and destructive forces of nature that can do extraordinary amounts of damage in a matter of mere moments. This landslide in Norway was captured by a drone camera, showing the terrifying force that pulled no less than eight buildings into the sea, plunging a large piece of coastline into the water. Fortunately, Norwegian authorities have confirmed that there were no injuries or missing individuals in the incident. During the time of the incident, only two people occupied the cabins, which are primarily used as vacation homes. The cause of the massive 800-meter-long slide remains unknown, adding to the mystery that surrounds this unfortunate occurrence. Amidst the chaos, a glimmer of hope emerged as a dog, caught up in the turmoil, would be saved by a helicopter. Swept away into the sea, the resilient canine managed to navigate its way back to the shore, where it was eventually rescued. There are more and more events like this taking place around the world, as extreme weather is taking its toll on the landscape and causing irreversible damage to homes and the future of many people with their way of life. Number 6. The Meteora Monasteries 
Throughout the ancient past, it seems that monasteries were often built on the most awkward and high up places that anyone could have possibly found. These monasteries in Greece, they're no exception. The Meteora monasteries were built many centuries ago on top of these gigantic rocks with epic views of the sea and the landscape all around. The word Meteora means to be suspended in the air, which seems apt for these extraordinary places. There are six monasteries active today and a small number of monks or nuns who live in them. The Meteora monasteries were granted UNESCO World Heritage Site status in 1988 and are still places that are often on top of tourist lists to visit when they're in Greece. These perched holy places also have a bit of a revival on the account of all the drone cameras that are flying about all over the place, and they're certainly perfect subjects for all of these epic sweeping camera angles now, aren't they? Number 4. Prajama Castle now, if there was ever a castle that looked as if it belonged in a fairy tale, then this one is it. This is the Prajama Castle in the south central part of Slovenia. It was built, quite literally, in the mouth of a cave in a huge rocky karst area of the country. This offers natural protection to much of the castle, but also makes for a rather epic view as well. Now known as the world's largest cave castle, Prajama has beneath its structure the second longest cave in the whole of Slovenia, which also has its very own secret tunnel leading out of the castle and into an open space. The tunnel itself would once be used as a hiding place when the castle was under attack. These days, the castle is no longer the haunt of knights and princesses, but rather it seems to attract film crews and wedding parties, as these picturesque medieval places tend to do. Number 3. Hanging Houses of Cuenca Located in the Spanish city of Cuenca, about 115 miles to the southwest of Madrid, the Casa Colgadas, or Hanging Houses, form an important part of this UNESCO World Heritage Site. These historical buildings have been clinging to the side of this gorge for several centuries in one form or another. They first appeared on the landscape in the 15th century and were built upon gradually up until the 18th century. Then, in the 1920s, they would undergo their most recent renovation work. Although only a few remain, it's believed that there were many more built in the centuries before. Three of these extraordinary buildings can be visited by tourists, providing interesting views across the gorge, but their wooden balconies may be a little too much for those, even with a light sprinkling of vertigo. Number 2. Santuario Madonna della Corona this remarkable place is built over 2,000 feet above sea level and into the vertical face of a cliff. That's one way to ensure that the place is protected, I suppose. The Santuario Madonna della Corona, or Sanctuary of the Lady of the Crown in Italy, is perched on such a sheer drop that it almost appears to be suspended in midair. Although it looks like it's just hanging there, the place is actually built on a very narrow rock shelf on the side of Mount Baldo. It's only accessible by a very narrow path from below and a street from above. The original purpose of this extraordinary place was as a refuge for holy men to come for silent reflection in a place completely removed from the rest of the world. In 1530, the church itself would be built, and eventually the site became a place to which anyone could take a pilgrimage and contemplate God in peace. The sanctuary survived all throughout the turmoil of the 20th century and continues to offer a place of quiet retreat for visitors and pilgrims alike. Number 1. The Ponte Vecchio The Ponte Vecchio in Florence, Italy is one of the most visited of tourist destinations in the whole city. The Italian Ponte Vecchio simply means old bridge, and that is a basic description of the structure, but it doesn't quite do it justice. In fact, this was the only bridge that crossed the River Arno in Florence until the year of 1218. The bridge that stands in the spot now has stood there since 1345, the original had been washed away during a flood and then needed to be rebuilt. But that 14th century bridge is still standing to this very day. There are plenty of small buildings on the Ponte Vecchio. That is one of the things that makes this bridge unusual. In fact, there have been shops on the bridge since the 13th century. Now there used to be all kinds of shops, from butchers and fishmongers to even tanners, but in 1593, there was a decree sent out that stated that only goldsmiths and jewelers would be allowed to keep their shops on the bridge. As well as being the main way to cross the river in the city of Florence, 
and being the location for shops and homes, the bridge was also used by the Medici family, the rich and powerful dynasty that ruled the city for many generations. The Ponte Vecchio would be used to build a corridor for the family to travel between their palaces without having to walk in the dangerous streets below with the common filth, and they never had to come in contact with any of the people that they actually ruled. Probably for the best, really. They wouldn't have wanted to get any of those riffraff germs on their posh persons now, would they? That's all from the more bananas home locations around the world. What is the most unusual place that you've ever lived in? And which of these homes would you choose to live in if you had to pick one? Go ahead and let me know all your splendid thoughts in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.